about what I'm asking you for our program, Him Singing Beside the Organ. Let me most sincerely welcome our father, Sir Engineer and Lady Fashoku in Houston. We are glad to see you uh, sitting down and waiting for us to be here today. We pray that the grace of God will continually abide with you in Jesus' name. Amen. There is nothing with which we can compare the presence of God. And so when we come to the presence of God, we come with thanksgiving, we are glad to sing and to rejoice in His presence. Our opening hymn today, the 18th day of October, is hymn number 22. Come, let us unite and sing to the tone better world. Charles Philip Fry was born May 30, 1838. 
at Asbury, Wiltshire in England. He died on 24th August 1882 at Park Hall, Parliament, Stanleyshire in Scotland. He was buried at Glasgow in Scotland. On the New Year's Eve day of 1884, a monument was raised and on which is written the first bandmaster of the Salvation Army. The monument epitaph was unveiled over his grave. On it was inscribed a verse that he wrote while alive. And I quote, the former things are past, and ended is described. I'm safe home at last. I live an endless life. He was a bricklayer by trade, like his father. He was a versatile musician, playing the violin, the cello, the piano, the cornet, and harmonium. He was leading an orchestra and band at the Western Chapel in Asbury. He also had the Christian mission in Salisbury and his family band, the Agonji. The tune, I have found a friend in Jesus, or simply put, Lily of the Valley, was composed by his William, William Shakespeare, 1837 to 1907. The key is F major, and the meter is irregular. Let's sing joyfully, I found the friend in Jesus is everything to me.
He is the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. Hmm. We give glory to God for this beautiful hymn composed by a servant of God. I pray that the music shall continually provide our souls comfort in Jesus' name. Amen. Our next hymn is taken from English Methodist hymn book 774. O oh God of love, to thee we bow. The tone is saffron walden. This is a popular hymn used as wedding services. It is attributed to Jenkins, William Bangan, born at Bristol, 6th September 1868. He died at Beaton, near Bristol, 30th June 1920. He was educated at Bristol Grammar School and became a chartered accountant. He was a member of the National Council of Adult Schools Union and secretary of his Bristol branch. He was an active member of several local churches, including Tindale Baptist Church and Highbury Congressional Church. At some time, he went to live at Beaton, six miles east of Bristol. After his death, a collection of his writings supplemented by those of his daughter, Gladys Bangan Jenkins, was unveiled. It appeared with the title, Grave and Gay. The tune we are using today, Saffron Warden, was composed by Brown, Otto Henry, who was born on July 24, 1830, at Brentwood, Essex, in England. The man died on February 15, 1926, at Brentwood, Essex, England. Almost completely self-taught, Brown began playing the organ at the age of 10. He was the organist of Brentwood Parish Church, Essex, between 1842 and 1853. At St. Edward's, Romford, in 1853 and 1858, Brentwood Parish Church, between 1858 and 1888, St. Peter's Church, southward from 1889, and Sir Anthony Brown School, up to 1926. A member of the London Gregorian Association, he helped assemble the service, service book for the annual festival in St. Paul's Cathedral. He supported the Oxford movement and pioneered the restoration of plain chant and Gregorian music in Anglican worship. Brown edited various publications, including the Altar Hymna. His other works include setting of the Canticles and the Holy Communion service, a children's festival service, anthems, songs, part songs, and over 800 hymn tunes and carols. The key to this hymn is D major. O oh God of love, to you we bow and pray for this before you now, that closely knit in holy vows, they may you become as one.
one day, he decided to make sure the, all the other animals know he was the king of the jungle. He was so confident that he passed by the smallest animal and went straight to the bear. Who is the king of the jungle? The lion asked. The bear replied, what are you asking? You are. Of course, you are the king of the jungle. The lion gave a mighty roar of approval. Next, he asked the tiger, who is the king of the jungle? The tiger quickly responded, everyone knows that you are mighty lion. Next on the list was the elephant. The lion faced the elephant and addressed his question, who is the king of the jungle? The elephant immediately grabbed the lion with his trunk, wheeled him around in the air five or six times, and slapped him into a tree. Then he pounded him, pounded him onto the ground several times, dunked him under water in the nearby lake, and finally dunked him out of the shore. The lion, beaten, bruised, and battered, struggled to his feet. He looked at the elephant through sad, though sad, and through his sad and bloody eyes and said, Look, just because you don't know the answer, it's no reason for you to get me about it. Ah, yes. How many of us often live with that kind of self-delusion? Yes. At the time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked him, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called a little child and had him stand among them. And he said, I tell you the truth. Unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 23, verses 11 to 13, Jesus said, The greatest among you will be your servant, for whosoever exalts himself will be humbled. And whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Jesus' suggestion that the essence of greatness is humility is not an idea that is easily sold in this day and our age. Humility and meekness are not what you would call sexy character traits. Can you imagine Madison Avenue selecting a humble person to be the spokesperson of a new car? No. No. Our culture is to worship success and power, ambition, fame, and wealth. Hmm. It doesn't make sense to Mother Teresa. Yes, William Bennett edited an enormous storm a few years ago called the Book of Virtue. In it, he listed a vast array of virtues, such as self-discipline, responsibility, work, perseverance, loyalty, courage, faith, honesty, compassion, friendship, among others. Humility did not make the list. Do we look for humility in our leaders? Do we list humility as a character trait on our resumes? If you claim to be humble, will you be bragging? Our next hymn teaches us about humility. Lord, that I may learn of thee, give me true simplicity. Win my soul and keep it low. Will it be a loan to know, to, to know the hymn 549 in English in book and the tone is simplicity, composed by O. Gibson that lived between 1583 and 1625. The key is A flat major.
love to thee, O Christ. Composed by Prentices, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, Nee Payson, youngest daughter of Dr. Edward Payson. She was born at Portland on October 26, 1818. Married to George Lewis Parentis, Doctor of Divinity, then at Bedford, Massachusetts, April 1845. And she died at Dorset, Vermont, August 13, 1878. Her life and letters by her and her husband appeared some time after Dr. Prentice removed from Bedford to New York in 1851 and was appointed professor of pastoral theology at Union Seminary, New York in 1873. Mrs. Prentice's work include The Flower of the Family, Stepping Heavenward in 1869, and religious poems in 1873. Of her hymns, the two following are most widely known. One, as on a vast eternal show thanksgiving, contributed to Scarves Christ in Song, Song 1869. Two, more to love thee, O Christ, more to love thee. To Christ's Desire, written in 1869 and first printed on a fly sheet, then in Hartwig's Church in Book, New York, in 1872. The tune, More Love to Thee, O Christ, was composed by William Howard Dwan, that we featured last week, an industrialist and philanthropist, William H. Dwan, that was born at Preston, in 1832 and died at South Orange, New Jersey, 1915. Was also a staunch supporter of evangelistic campaigns and prolific writer of hymn tunes. The hymn is a prayer that the Christian will continue to make the love of God his or her highest aim in life, as the psalmist wrote. You guide me with your counsel, and afterward you will receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth that I desire beside you. Psalm 73, verses 24 to 25. This hymn shall be taken in Yoruba language. The key is A flat major. King Pelsi Christi, King Pelsi.
just address us on uh, other platforms where this program is being aired. On Methodist TV, we appreciate you that you are there joining us. We want to apologize for starting late today. We have online with us our indefatigable president, Brother Pesos Morakinyo, our indefatigable active and beloved Ash the Sunday president, uh, of a uh, 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 president elect is here with us, Sister Tony Ashalu, we welcome you. The Ash the Sunday president elect is also here with us, uh, Brother Oluadairo, we welcome you. Let me thank our Papa, Sir Engineer Emmanuel Pashokun, for joining us online today. Sister Bamidele Kayode, we appreciate you. Reverend Kolawale Igbasan from MTN Shagamu, we appreciate you. Mary Reverend Olijide Atosu, God bless you. Oluwashi Kemi, from wherever that you have joined us, the grace of God will be with you in the United Kingdom where you are in Jesus' name. Mary Reverend Sao Ebe, you are with us on YouTube. God bless you. Thank you so much. Brother Biyadu Ogunshade, Mary Reverend Ebenezer Ajiboye, Brother Amos Ipushika at Ife, we thank you for joining us. We have several other people uh, that have joined us all over the world. Brother Felix, we thank you for joining us and for broadcasting this program. Brother John, we, I don't know your surname, but you are here with us. The Almighty God, we, we announce your glory in Jesus' name. We also have with us uh, yes, uh, she came me. I don't know the person, but God knows you. Uh, you you are the one that has sponsored the program today. Sister Oluwa, she came me. She's in UK, and she has joined us online, and she's sponsoring the program today. The grace of God we abide with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me sincerely appreciate our choristers that have volunteered to be with us every Sunday. God Almighty, we bless you and nourish your souls in Jesus' name. Amen. You are beloved of this. It's very relevant. Okay, thank you. Brother Victor. Pasai. 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 Yes, my friend. Don't worry. I will remember the more. <laughs> thank you. The Lord will honor you. And brother, when I hear you, because you are able, I cannot forget that. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me thank the technical crew, all of you, holding the camera, Broadcasting this program live. God of all mercies will release his mercy upon you. Amen. And bless you most sincerely in Jesus' name. My two I see that officially uh, stands in for me. Very Reverend Father Kobe Mimakide, thank you for producing all the paperwork that we have used. The Almighty God will bless you most sincerely in Jesus' name. Amen. Join us next week again, 3 p.m., when we stand beside the organ to sing. To God's praise. Until then, I remain yours sincerely. Amos Akin Lose Akin Deco. God bless you.
program today, the 18th day of October in the year of the Lord 2020. We will be awaiting you next Sunday by the grace of God, 3 p.m. to join us on Facebook account Amos Akindeko Akin Lawson, as well as on YouTube Methodist Dallas Church Nigeria Dallas of Indonesia, and as well as on our regular channel on Zoom. We pray that the grace of God will abide with you as you join us. Please tell your friends and invite them to join us next week. Bye.